In the movement to roll back choice in this country, there is one number you will hear a lot in the coming weeks, tw coming months, 20 weeks. Over the past three years, bans on abortions at or before 20 weeks have been enacted in over a dozen states, most recently in Texas. With names like the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, these bills are based on a theory that a fetus can feel pain at 20 weeks. And while they claim to be rooted in science, in actuality, they are not. Writing in Salon, Katie McDonough calls the fundamental justification for these laws a really big, really popular lie. In fact, the research behind these theories has been discredited by the Journal of the American Medical Association, the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the British Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and researchers at both Harvard Medical School and Harvard Law, all of whom claim that the brain's connections required to feel pain are not formed until at least 24 weeks and often weeks after that. Joining us now is the assistant editor at Salon, Katie McDonough, consulting medical director at Physicians for Reproductive Health, Dr. Ann Davis, and president of NARAL Pro-Choice America, Elise Hogue. Ladies and Ryan, I'm very to have you. I'm very happy to have you here. And Dr. Davis, I want to go to you first because we we often talk about this from the political and the, and look at this through the political lens. But you are a medical professional. You have performed some of these services. Mm -hmm. You have been with women in the doctor's room when these choices have to be made. I have. And you also understand the science behind a developing fetus and 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 the, the uh, a woman's body. And I ask you. What happens at 20 weeks? Is a, fe is a fetus capable of feeling pain? And, and why is there this pseudoscience out there saying otherwise if that's not in fact true? Well, uh, there's uh, facts, and the facts about fetal development have not changed. So fetal development is fetal development. And I think one thing that's contributed to confusion is sonograms, because sonograms have gotten incredible. They're very detailed. And so we get this very up-close view of what's happening, but it's not changing the way that the fetus develops. We know very clearly that the tracts in from the body to the brain that convey pain those very specific sets of nerves aren't laid down until much later in the pregnancy than the 20 week band so the 20 week number and the actual time that a fetus could really perceive pain are months apart um and Katie's great piece, you're quoted as saying, when you're sitting in your office with a woman who is 22 weeks into a pregnancy with a severe fetal anomaly, mm -hmm. she's depressed, she's stressed, and now she's worried, is my baby going to feel pain? Mm -hmm. It's just another thing these women have to struggle with. And why? These are created concerns. They are not based in science, they are based in politics. I think people don't understand 20 weeks to have an abortion in 20 weeks means someone is in a desperate situation. I mean, it is, it is not some sort of choice over whether or not they think they can uh, afford to have a baby. I'd like anybody, I'd welcome anybody to talk to me about the patients that I see and their re very real circumstances. Just in the last few weeks, these are services that I provide. In the last few weeks, I've had a number of patients who were 22, 23 weeks, who had fetal treatments fail, who had uh, a fetal condition develop much later in the pregnancy that never could have been diagnosed early without any no matter what the science it's not going to be there so these are conditions that are going to occur they can be very severe and women are they're deeply affected uh, they feel very stressed by um, finding someone to take care of them by going through surgery they have concerns about that as anyone would who's having an operation and then to say to them now I'm going to make you worry about something that isn't real so that just adds something else onto the pile that they have to think about and worry about and it's not how doctors should be talking to patients um, uh, Elise, we know that this isn't really, of course, about fetal pain. It, it, it isn't really even about, uh, I mean, I would say the, the protection of life. It's about, a, it's about a concerted effort to roll back reproductive rights and make it harder and harder Absolutely. and harder for women to exercise control over their own bodies. Absolutely. And, and what, what the most disturbing part of the 20-week ban is that this is something that was introduced on the floor of the House of Representatives in Congress. It's not just state level. Passed. Yes, and passed. passed. So from your vantage point, I mean, how, how do we increase not only literacy around this, but, but how, do, how does one make sure that this movement doesn't gain further steam? I mean, there is concern now that Roe v. Wade will either be rolled back or eroded enough that it really eradicates a woman's right to choose in the United States of America. Absolutely, Alex. I think we need to do two things. I think we need to listen to the doctors and listen to the real women who are facing these impossible situations. Because when that happens, Americans know we can't make that decision for someone else. And guess who else shouldn't be? Politicians. We don't trust them. 
because they're not doctors. They don't understand the medical. We trust our women, we trust our, our doctors. The other thing that's really important, and you get at it, is this is part of an agenda. It's not about 20 weeks to them. It's about banning abortion outright. And by the way, they're not that fond of contraception either when you get right down <laughs> right. to it. And we've seen this over and over again. We've seen it when the 20 week ban passed in Texas. The very next day, the GOP down there introduced a six week ban, right? Because they are, it, they'll go from 20 to 12 to 6 until women in this country don't have access to the constitutional rights established by Roe. And I think it's really important to expose this is not the only place they lie. I mean, these folks have about as much credibility on fetal pain as Exxon does on climate change, right? But we're also tracking their crisis pregnancy centers around the country where they codify lying and humiliating women because their ultimate goal is to eradicate abortion. And if they can't do that, they think we should be harassed and shamed for making the decisions that are and, ours. and that's the other piece too right it's not just the fetal pain uh, the, the psychology of even saying fetal pain to a woman who may have to abort a child that she is trying to carry but Katie the the question of mandatory waiting periods and counseling which has now become law in many states is all designed to undermine the choices a woman um, is asked to make in her doctor's office Absolutely, and I feel like it's important to see these bans as part of a larger comprehensive national strategy to eradicate women's access to legal abortion. So you have a 20-week ban, you have in states like Arkansas and North Dakota, you have a 12-week and a 6-week ban, but in addition to that, these legislatures are passing regulatory restrictions that prevent women from accessing the procedure, from shuttering clinics so that women have to travel longer and further to get one. Yeah. Um, they're eliminating insurance coverage for the procedure so that women have to wait longer to be able to pay for it, which I think is another huge factor when you're talking about abortion at 20 weeks. Which costs, I think, abortions cost, and you would know this better than I, $400, and for some low-income women who re represent, I think, 42% of the women who get abortions, they are low-income women, $400 is a lot of money. And I believe that's in the first trimester. I think the later into a pregnancy, you get the more expensive the procedure gets and so if women aren't able to afford a first trimester abortion up front they are going to have to wait longer to try and save that money and it is going to delay when they can access the procedure. Um, Dr. Davis um, we, we have to wrap it up here unfortunately but when we talk about the, the state getting involved in the sort of in the world of doctors they're also trying to impose all sorts of rules and regulations on the clinics the size of the doors of the clinic mm -hmm. the material they're made out of whether or not a doctor has admitting privileges. What what about fellow doctors in your profession? I mean, as they see these regulations come down, what is the reaction from the medical community? We love patient safety. You you never get doctors more excited than talking at a conference about patient safety. We talk about surgery and antibiotics and protocols, and we're all about patient safety. If there are real things that affect patient safety, we're all for it, and we want to work on it hand in hand with who's ever interested. Those are not about patient safety. Um, abortion already is very safe, um, and if we can make it safer, that's great but having admitting privileges restrictions and turning your uh, clinic into a hospital isn't going to make abortions any safer. No, and, and by all means, I think it probably does the opposite. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there, but thank you to this awesome panel. We hope to have you guys back for more, and thank you, Ryan, for, for mansplaining. <laughs> uh, Salons Katie McDonough, Nayral's Elise Hogue, and Dr. Ann Davis from Physicians for Reproductive Health. Thank you all.